given cos to the power of 4x plus blah, 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 prove that, okay, so pretty much prove the identity. Right, so here is our identity that we need to prove. So, uh, just trying to think where I can write this. So I'm definitely going to work on the left-hand side. So we could say left-hand side. And now we've got cos to the 4 plus sin squared x times cos squared x over 1 plus sin x. Right, first thing I would do at the top is just take out a common factor from these two terms. The common factor would be cos square x. And then what you would be left with over here is another cos square x plus. Now from here, we've taken this one out. So what are we left with? Sin squared. Okay, at the bottom, 1 plus sin x. Now, we know that that is equal to 1. So what we could then do is, I'm going to write over here, is just say cos squared x, and then that's just a 1. And then at the bottom, we've just got that. Now having a 1 there doesn't do anything. Okay, so this is where we're at at this moment. Now, what I would do is I would actually change this from sin squared x plus cos squared x. We know that that is always equal to 1. So I'm going to get this by itself as 1 minus sin squared x. So that's going to become 1 minus sin squared x. Now the reason I've done that is because now this can become a difference of squares because you've got two terms separated with a negative and 1 times 1 gives you this and sin times sin gives you that. So we can then rewrite that as 1 minus sin, 1 plus sin. Okay, no, that's messy, Kev. That's really messy. Let's go over there. So that's going to become 1 minus sin, 1 plus sin, over 1 plus sin. Now, these two can now cancel, and therefore we get 1 minus sin x, which is what they wanted. And so we could say, therefore, left-hand side is right-hand side. Okay, so it says, for what values is this expression undefined? So undefined is when you have a denominator that is zero. That is what undefined means. So we can say one plus sin x, and we can make that equal to zero. And then we can say, where is sin x equal to negative one? Now you can solve this using the whole quadrant reference angle. But whenever it's a 0, 1, minus 1, I like to actually just use the graph. That's a normal sin graph. And where is a normal sin graph equal to minus 1? Well, it starts here, which is 270 degrees. And if I had to keep going, it would repeat every 360. So I could say x is going to be at 270 plus multiples of 360, where k is an element of z. But now I just realized that they actually gave us an interval. So they don't want, they just want it as that. Just the 270 because they gave us an interval. Okay. Now this question says, write down the minimum. Don't use calculus. We don't use calculus in trigonometry, um, at least for grade 12. We don't do that. If you did university um, maths there, of course, you're going to use calculus with trigonometry. Um, but here it just says write down the minimum value of this function. Now, this is an ugly function, but we know that this ugly function is also equal to that. So all we do is we rewrite it as that, and then we just analyze the question from that perspective. Some of you might be saying, well, Kev, why didn't we do that with this question? Well, that's because here we don't have a denominator. Here we do. And to be able to do undefined, we want a denominator. Okay, so we're not going to look at this, like I said, we're just going to look at this. Now they want to know when is this thing a minimum? So you want to make this expression as small as possible. So to do that, we would want to make this part as big as possible. Because if you can take this number and minus a big number, then you make this entire expression small. So if I look at a normal sin graph, the biggest I could ever make it is up here when x, I mean, when it's equal to 1. So if this is a 1, then it becomes 1 minus 1, and that'll then be 0.